okay, I have a very unfortunate scenario that I'm going to give myself today. You guys know how I do under these fake scenarios. So I've been seeing a number of my fellow creators doing this video. I think the first one that I saw was from Kelly Gooch, but it's if I lost my entire makeup collection, here is what I would buy first. So I have a lot of tried and trues in this video. If you've watched me for a long time, especially if you've seen my best of videos, top videos, best of the best, you know, those kinds of videos, I don't think there are that many shockers in here. You should just play a guessing game of how many of these can you predict that's coming. Uh, so, cause this is like, this is a classic look for me. If I could only wear one look for the rest of my life, it would look something like this, you know, some type of variation of this. So no surprises here, but I did go through my entire collection and I pulled products where if I just lost my whole collection, I would run out and pick these up first because I cannot live without these. And a lot of these items, I was thinking in terms of versatility as well. So. A lot of these I feel like are either multi-purpose or they just kind of check a lot of boxes for what I'm looking for for my makeup. So let's start off with my primer, which the number one thing for me with primer, I would say most important is like hydration. But then I actually figured out an item that kind of did it all that I was looking for for a primer and even more. It actually is a new item to my collection that I picked up for the Sephora sale, but I've fallen in love with this product. This is a must-have product for me. It's the Super Goop Glow Screen. Make sure you get the glow screen specifically. So I have mine in the lightest shade, and I love this because it's multi-purpose for me. It's a sunscreen, it's hydrating, and it also provides a glow to the skin as well. So originally, I was eyeing my favorite hydrating primers because First and foremost, that is what I need. But then I remembered this new item from Sephora is kind of a do it all item for me. So if I had to pick up something first to go underneath my makeup, this is definitely it. It checks those boxes of SPF, of glowiness, and of hydration. It looks beautiful on its own. It looks beautiful underneath a foundation. It looks beautiful just with concealer. So this is probably one of the items that you were not going to pick for me. I almost picked Smashbox Primerizer or the NYX Hydrating one, but this one is my new all-time favorite. I actually have a short coming up very soon, if it's not already up, about how much I stink and love this product. Now, foundations. This one was really, 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 really difficult for me because I like having a lot of foundations. I like having a lot of options. So I wanted to go with a product that I felt like was middle of the road medium coverage, not too heavy, not too light, not too glowy, not too matte, wore a long time, was versatile in that way. So I went with the good old tried and true Armani Luminous Silk. You guys know this has been one of my favorites for years and sometimes it gets a little lost in the sauce because I do do so many reviews of different foundations, but this is one that I'm always going back to because it's not too much of anything and not too little of anything as well. And you really can customize it if you just apply a little bit, you'll get a really light coverage, but you can definitely build it up as well and it's very reliable it's gonna last a long time it looks good in the daytime it looks good in the evening time it looks great in photographs so this has been a cult classic foundation for years for I don't know how many people hundreds thousands millions for a large number of people because it is a great reliable foundation so I went with this one I was debating between some of my current favorites that like the NAR there's a NARS one that I love the hourglass liquid vanish foundation but I think if I had to run out and get something first, this is always going to be a necessity in my collection. Concealer, right away, no brainer. Too Faced, born this way, multi-use sculpting concealer. I went straight for this one, didn't look at any others because I feel like 
This is so versatile. I love it for its full coverage, but it still has a very like lighter finish. It doesn't look heavy on the under eyes. It works great as a foundation if you want to use it in that way for like super full coverage or even just to get the red areas, apply a dot and spread it out. So it looks good on bare skin. It looks good on its own all over the skin. It looks good underneath the eyes. It provides a full coverage without being too drying. This is definitely the best concealer that I can think of if I don't own any other concealers. I absolutely need to have this with me at all times. Next up, I wanted to do some cream products. I skipped out on cream highlight because I just don't like cream highlights. But I knew for cream contour, I had to pull this e.l.f. cream contour palette. Now, I was between a couple of my favorite cream contour sticks, but I feel like purchasing a palette when I'm restarting a collection is the best way to go because I have multiple shades. And this one is affordable as well because I'm going to be spending a lot of money at once. So I do have this affordable option. I like how you have a lighter shade, a medium warmer shade, a deep shade, which I don't use very often, but then also this highlighting shade as well so this would be my cream option in terms of sculpting lately I've been loving this makeup forever one but this is also $85 <laughs> so I think this is a great alternative if you are looking into the makeup forever one obviously this has less shades available to you but I love the formula of this if it weren't for this e.l.f. logo right here, you wouldn't be able to tell how affordable it was. It definitely has a high-end formula, so absolutely need to have this. The multiple shades give this so much versatility as well as it's just affordable. You get a lot for your buck. And then cream blush. There are so many cream blushes I love. The, the industry is not short of good cream blushes. I would say one of my tried and true reliables that I always feel the need to have in my collection are the nude sticks, blush sticks. So my favorite shade is in the nude. This is the one that I probably use the most. And I've been re-inspired to use these even more again because you guys know I've also been into the Sophia Ritchie wedding and she is an ambassador or some sort of something of nude sticks and they used her blushes at her wedding wedding and anyways I have always loved these they aren't the creamiest or the most malleable but I'm okay with that because they're very easy to use still and I find that they last a long time and again they go really great over bare skin as well as lighter coverage makeup as well as fuller coverage makeup so these are maybe not the most exciting cream blush options since so many brands have come out with much more exciting cream blush formulas but this one is a reliable one for me and I like that you know you don't have to worry about it spilling or leaking it's just a good one to have now on to powder products starting off with setting powder no-brainer went straight to this one Maybelline Fit Me, another affordable one. It just knocks all of the other powders like out of the water. So I'd get the shade Fairlight because I like it to kind of brighten the center of my face. There are two other powders that I can think of that are competitive in terms of blurring, blurriness, blurriness, whatever, in terms of blurring. This one is Queen Creme de la Creme, the best one. It looks so soft on the skin. It blurs over all of the pores. It is just stunning. Second and third would be Pat McGrath and uh, Huda Beauty, but this one I would say would be the first one that I'm reaching for, and I like that it looks good with baking, but it also looks good if you just use a light brush to apply a little bit of powder. It's really, really nice. Now, I needed a powder bronzer, and there are so many great powder bronzers right now. I'm really into the Pat McGrath one, so I picked this one. I mean, I've told you guys I really love this bronzer. However, if you have a lot of bronzers, you know, it's not going to change the game. But if I have none, I'm really into this one, so I'd probably pick this one up. So this is the Divine Bronzer in the shade specifically Nude Honey, because if the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Bronzer was still around, that would be the one that I would pick. 
but it's not around. And this shade is very, very, very close to that Tantastic shade. So this is what motivated me to get it because it looks good to somewhat contour with and somewhat bronze with as well. It is the perfect hybrid between the two cool and warm tones. It's a beautiful formula. It's very, very easy to use. And you guys know my love for Pat McGrath. I'm restarting my Pat McGrath collection pretty much as well. So I definitely want to have a bronzer. It's a stunning formula and this shade is perfect. Now, blush. Kind of cheating, but I need to get this. So I need an hourglass blush formula in my life, okay? They're beautiful. So I figured if I lost all of my collection, I'm putting my money down on whatever big hourglass ambient lighting edit palette is out. So not this one specifically, but this is just the one that they have online right now. Whatever one they have, I'm picking it up because I have the ambient lighting finishing powders, highlights, this is a bronzer, these are blushes, whatever variation, I'm getting it. I need hourglass powders in my life. They are worth every penny and the palette is a great way to get multiple shades that are already in the permanent line within a value palette. So I'm wearing this blush today and then I have one of the dim light powders as a finishing powder to add like a soft glow when the sun hits. But whatever of these palettes is out, I have to have it in my collection. Hourglass, I would say nobody does powders like Hourglass. Blush, bronzers, highlights, setting powders. Hourglass has the best, so I'm picking up the palette. Need to have it in my collection. Now, in terms of powder highlight though, I could stick with Hourglass, but I wanted something a little extra with a little bit more oomph, and it had to be the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. This is a classic for me. Ever since I got this, I've been in love with it. It's just four different highlight shades. You can even use these as eyeshadows, so that's probably how I would use this if it's all that I had in my collection. You have a pinky shimmer shade, a white, and a gold. They sit so beautifully on the skin. They're a big gelée formula. That's just very, very well done. They're quite glowy, but if you use just a little bit, just a little particles of powder and you blend it out, you can get a really natural glow from within. Solid, solid highlight formula, and you get four different shades. So that's where I'm taking advantage of starting a new collection with these palettes. And then the last thing for complexion, setting spray from Charlotte Tilbury. This is my all-time favorite setting spray. It's more so for longevity. This is the Airbrush Flawless setting spray. I really do feel like this does set my makeup and help with the longevity. So I have to have this. I love the way that it smells. As much as I would like like a hydrating setting spray, for me when it comes to setting spray, I would rather have something for longevity and this one has to be it. And it's not drying by any means, but it also isn't hydrating, you yeah. know? But it's, it's a beautiful setting spray that really does what it says it's supposed to do. Next up we have eyebrows. Now eyebrow pencils, I'm quite flexible with what I use and what I like. So this is the one where I don't necessarily feel married to this choice. I could go to the drugstore and be just as happy. I could go into Sephora pick up a few different ones, whatever is nearest me. I did end up choosing the Esam Brow Defining Pencil because this is one where every time I use it, I'm just like, yes, this is a good brow pencil. It's super duper slim, it's not too creamy, it's not too waxy, it blends out easily, but it doesn't over blend. It's a solid, good eyebrow pencil. Like I said, not married to this one, but it is one of my favorites, but I'm not picky. I mean, it's funny because I am picky with my brow pencils, but a lot of brands do do it right, so it's okay. We got options. Now, eyebrow, like gel, easy. Too Faced Fluff and Hold Laminating Brow Wax. This is my all-time favorite brow gel. It's the way that the spoolie brushes the brows out to make them look separated, which makes them look more full. It's the way that it lasts all day. I don't find it to be too crunchy. I know some people do, but for me, I'm happy with it. It doesn't like paste them flat against my face like some of the brow glues. I, I just really, really love this one. I find when my brows look their best, it's when I use this. And then a must have in my collection is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in Boundless Bisque. It's basically just this 
cream colored pencil. I use this for so many things. Today I used it to clean up under my brows. Sometimes I'll use it in the inner corner. Sometimes I'll use it in my waterline. Sometimes I'll use it to clean up around my lips. Sometimes I'll use it to highlight my nose. You can do so much with this little stick. So this one is also a must have. No matter what, we'll have this. And it's not too creamy. It's the fact that it almost is like dry, like a powder, but not super powdery or dry. But you know, it leans towards drier, which allows you to do so much more with it. And then eyeshadow primer. I need to have the Jaclyn Cosmetics First Base Eyeshadow Primer. This is the best primer I've ever used. Not even kidding. It like smooths out my eyelids, like blurs them. It's a word that I was looking for. It literally blurs the eyelids and I think it helps with making eyeshadows blend a little bit easier. This is my favorite eye primer. I think it's amazing. And then eyeshadow palettes was difficult, of course. I knew I needed to have a Natasha Denona palette. As much as I love my Pat McGrath, they aren't complete enough for me to like be the only eyeshadow palette that I have in my collection. So I almost picked the Glam palette, but I still felt like it didn't have like, it didn't cover all the bases that I needed. So it had to be the Biba palette, okay? If all my palettes were taken from me, I need neutrals. Neutrals is my go-to, my comfort level, what I like to wear for every day. And so I like the Biba palette. One, obviously I picked Natasha Denona because she has the best quality, but I like the Biba palette because it is all neutrals, but it's different tones of neutrals. So up here we have like more kind of camel colored, then we have more warm colored, then we have more neutral colors here. You have everything from a cream to a black, some glimmery shimmeries, just a really complete palette. So this one would do me well if it was the only palette that I had. I hope that is never the case. But if I had to pick one, the first one that I'm buying to start over is going to be this one. Now I have it on for today's look. Really simple. I'm sure I've done this look before. I used the shade Freckle all over my crease. Really, really blended that out. Wanted that to be blown out underneath all of the layering that I'm doing. I used the shade Coco right next to it in the outer corner of my eye and my lower lash line. Just blended that out to add some interest and depth to the eye. On the outer corner, I used some of Rustic just in the outer half of my eyelid to add some shimmeries on the lid but still keep the depth. All over my eyelid, I went in with the shade Shine. I love this shade because it has little kind of sparkly pigments in there, but it's not too obnoxious, but it still adds that little oomph. And then I used some of Monroe right here on the inner corner of my eye to brighten everything. And then I felt like I needed a little bit more depth in the outer corner. So I went in with the shade Seed. Yeah, Seed right here. And I just focused that really in the outer corner and then the lower lash line as well. So, I mean, that's the best palette. That's, that's the one that I need to have if I lose everything. Eyeliners, I needed a black and I needed a brown. So for a black liquid liner, I chose the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen. I don't know how I lived so long without this. This has two sides. One is a really small, tiny brush. The other is a bigger, longer one. I feel like this never dries out. While very expensive, I've had this for a long, long time. It's still going strong. It makes creating wings really easy. It's a very, very black. It doesn't smudge. Worth every penny. Need to have this. Why is my voice giving out right now? <clears throat> Continuing on. For a brown eyeliner, I prefer brown in a pencil form because I feel like I can smudge it along the lash line just for like a subtle effect. I can put it in the water line. Just a little bit more versatility. If I'm going for brown, typically I'm going for something more soft anyways. So I picked out the Jones Road, the best pencil in the shade brown. I love this because it's it's like applying an eyeshadow. So you know how applying an eyeshadow for eyeliner is just easier than anything in like a liquid or cream format? This is a pencil form of what feels like applying a powder eyeshadow on my eyelid. It's just that easy. There's so much glide. It's not too creamy. You can kind of blend it out almost like a 
powder shadow. It's one of the best pencils. It's really, really soft looking, but still gives that definition. This is one of the best pencils. So for brown, I'm going for this one. Mascaras, you know, I've already spent so much money. I just need a good, reliable one. And for that, I'm going to the drugstore and I'm getting the Essence Last Princess in the green tube. This is the best one. You guys know I don't have the longest lashes nor the most amount. And I feel like this does a good job of like length, volume, and separation. So I don't work with much. So this is like kind of a big deal that you can even see it. Don't look at my upper. I have falsies on right now, but you can see my lower lashes and that's more than what a lot of mascaras will do. In my opinion, it's just the best. It's also affordable. I would pick up this one first. Now falsies, I need to have falsies. Okay, it makes any look just look um, put together, finished. So for me, my favorite ones ever for every day are the Ardell 420 lashes from their Naked line. These are so beautiful. They look good if you have an eyeliner and are creating a more dramatic look. They look amazing with even out any liner. It just makes, they look like lash extensions to me. These are what I have on right now and they look like they could potentially be my real lashes. They have such a wispy effect without being too long. They have a nice natural curl which opens up the eyes. These are the best lashes. I need to have these at all time so I picked these and I mean don't they just look amazing? They do right? Okay so let's finish off with lips. Most of these are things I've talked about for years. I need to have my classic nude lip. So let's talk about lip liners. There are two that I need to have at all times. First one from Charlotte Tilbury, Pillow Talk 2 Medium. This is my perfect Your Lips but Better color. It's going to add much more life back into my face while still looking like the natural color of my lips. So I need to have this for every day no matter what. But if I want one, my perfect nude, or two, just a really full pout, I need the Pat McGrath Labs Perma Gel Ultra Lip Pencil in the shade Contour. This is the perfect kind of contoury shade to make your lips look more full. So contour is the key to my nude lips. So let me finish my nude lip. Contour in the lips. Then I need to have Charlotte Tilbury Hey Honey. This is my favorite nude lippy, which is the color I'm wearing most of the time. It goes well with cool makeup and it goes well with warm toned makeup. It's my favorite formula of lipstick ever, the Charlotte Tilbury Kissing Formula. So it has hydration, it has a shiny finish, beautiful, have to have Hey Honey lipstick. This is the only lipstick I picked. If I could pick more, I would, but this is the first one I'm getting. And then to finish off my perfect nude lip, I need to have my Pat McGrath Labs Lust Lip Gloss in the shade Dare to Bear. This is just a really pretty nude lip gloss. It's not sticky, but it's thick. So it smooths over the lines of the lips, making them look more plump. Beautiful shade, goes with so many other colors. So I need to have Dare to Bear. And then the last product in today's video, this one I was thinking more for like my everyday lip. So for my everyday lip, Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Medium 2 Lip Liner, and then Clarins Lip Oil in the shade Patea. This has been my hyper focus lately for lips. I've been talking about these so much because they really do give the plumpest, glassiest look to my small little lips. I like the shade Patea because it almost adds like a lip stained look. So this with the Pillow Talk 2 Medium, everyday lip and then the combo of these is my favorite nude lip and I am good to go to begin with. I know looking at this I feel like this is more makeup than people I know and love even have <laughs> uh, but that, these are the basics. These are what I need for survival. It would be these and it's still a lot of money but it's still a lot but if I were to have lost my entire makeup collection. We're starting off with these guys here, but you better believe I will be buying more because I like options. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, interesting, entertaining. With these products, we got kind of my ideal everyday makeup look. This is what I feel the most confident in. So all of these products, allowed me to achieve that and yeah make sure you like this video subscribe to my channel 
and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.